Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're watching or listening to another episode of Engine Room, a podcast by Token Metrics. My name is Dylan Love, and I am joined on this special Friday episode with Miss Nancy Chen. Nancy is the principal recruiter for Token Metrics. And Nancy, my first question to you, ma'am, what, what is a principal recruiter all about? What is your day-to-day all about at Token Metrics? So hi, Dylan. Um, thanks for having me on at Engine Room. So principal recruiter means that I basically comb through all the resumes that we get. I interview candidates for the various positions that we have. So for those uh, that are listening, if you would like to go full-time in crypto, I encourage you to visit the careers page of our website. Um, We have a number of openings available. So please apply, um, spread the word that Token Metrics is hiring. Yeah, yeah. Selfishly, I'll throw it out there that we're we're looking for writers and writing interns in particular. So if you want to work with cool guys like me and Nancy, you know how to do it. I understand that this is, uh, you, you're early in your crypto journey. Uh, so you're about, you're about 18 months in total. Is this your first crypto job? Yes, it is my first crypto job. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about how I got into crypto. Please. Yeah, so I first learned about Bitcoin probably in like 2009, 2010. Uh, my husband at the time, he was uh, talking about mining Bitcoin. And I was so caught up with what I was doing at the time that I pretty much ignored them. And if I could go back, uh, I would change that. I definitely would have gotten into crypto back then. So then over the years, um, I would hear about crypto, specifically Bitcoin, because I'd get those scam emails, you know, Mm -hmm. those blackmail emails, like send this, send this much Bitcoin or else we'll release all your private information. So I I had some awareness of Bitcoin. And then um, for many years, I was self-employed. So I had a small consulting business and we specialized in building custom web applications. So when COVID happened, we went into lockdown, I think it was March of 2020. Um, Like many small businesses, mine kind of went into limbo, right? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I had all this time on my hands and um, so did my boyfriend and my business partner. And they started talking to me about crypto. And initially I was extremely resistant because it was something new, and I'm kind of one of those people that is resistant to change, mm-hmm. but just they were relentless, right? So eventually, I just kind of broke down and got into it, um, and I'm really glad that I did. What, what was day one? Was it just like buying and holding a little bit of Bitcoin, or was it something more esoteric than that? Uh, no, the first thing I did was buy a little bit of Bitcoin, and then I got introduced to Ethereum, and um got really excited about ETH. I can't even explain why. I just watched like hours of videos on YouTube and just kind of got lost into that whole thing. And then it was actually my boyfriend that introduced me to token metrics. So he would play the videos. And if I was in the same room, I just kind of got forced to listen. And then (laughs) eventually I got hooked. And now here I am talking to you. Yeah. Financial education, whether you like it or not. He, he was exactly. hold, holding your the future of your personal finance held, were being held hostage. Exactly. <laughs> well, cool. Uh, what were you up to prior to crypto? What, uh, you mentioned your business that you were running. What was your life all about before this crypto thing entered the picture? Yeah. Um, so I had the consulting business, which I ran. So I was self-employed for many years. And I've been, so I've been working remotely for over 15 years. Uh, oh, so, wow. Yeah. Uh, really love working remotely. Likewise. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get it. Yeah. Yes, um, yes. We are cut from the same cloth in that respect. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And then I have a couple of other passions in life. I'm a tribal fusion dancer. And um, you're probably wondering, what the heck is that? Yeah, there's a lot of words going on there. Tribal <laughs> fusion dancer. Yeah. Uh, so it is basically a modern form of belly dance. It, it merged maybe 20 years ago on the West Coast of California. Um, and, uh, it's something I was, it was kind of like crypto when I first got into it, I was like, okay, this is, this is kind of cool. And like, the more I learned, the more I wanted to learn and it became a bit of an obsession. So I did a lot of belly dance, um, prior to COVID and then COVID sort of changed things. Um, you know, because we weren't doing, you know, we were in quarantine, weren't doing things in person. So, So, and I used to travel uh a lot 
for belly dance. I would go to like new places and just meet other belly dancers. And yeah, so I, I have a former classmate of mine who I'm still in touch with on social mm -hmm. media, and she is way into the deep end of belly dancing. I don't know if it's oh. tribal fusion dance Ooh. or or if it's more classical conventional belly dancing. Mm -hmm. I just know that she's out there going to conventions and okay. she's part of a dance troupe that gets hired to perform. Yep. So I'm loosely aware of this being a really big thing. So it's, I had no idea you were into that, Nancy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is actually a really big thing. It's a small community. And, and um, uh, unfortunately, I'm less involved now because crypto kind of took over my life. I, and and no, no disrespect to your, your, your passion, but I, I suspect crypto can be a little more profitable than dance. <laughs> yes, for <laughs> sure. Um, let me know if you're comfortable talking about this. I have a I have a, a hunch that you were into singing before dance took over. Is that true? Oh, um, sort of. I mean, as a kid, yes. And okay. I will bust out if we ever do karaoke. But I, yeah, I don't token metrics karaoke anymore. night. That's got to be a thing next time we're all in the same place. That's that, yeah. that'll happen eventually. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, what else do we need to know about, uh, like, I one of the things that I am on the outside looking in on is Token Metrics Ventures, and I feel like you probably have a little bit of a hand in Token Metrics Ventures. What? Actually, I don't. Actually, no? Wow, I mean, wow. No, intrigue, I don't. Intrigue, intrigue. <laughs> it's like, uh, it feels like I live in a neighborhood, and there's a neighbor building something big and cool and interesting inside the house. And I have no idea what's going on over there. That's kind of the vibe I get with Token Metrics Ventures. I'm so intrigued by what's going on. Yeah, Anyways. that's the vibe that I get too. And um, you're not the only one. A lot of our customers are really intrigued too. So one of the things that I get to do, um, you know, we're a startup. And so we naturally wear multiple hats and pitch in yeah. where we can. So I have the privilege of hosting our weekly webinar with the customers. And um, I love that. It's kind of surreal for me because I remember, you know, following token metrics on YouTube and now every week, once a week for a couple hours, I get to hang out with our in-house crypto experts. Um, you know, they're the brightest minds in crypto. Yeah, I don't mind telling you that I've learned quite a bit from guys like Forrest and Jed. I, I, had, a, I had a call with Jed just this morning, literally about, hey, how does this work with the indices? Um, yeah. you know, no better person to talk to than that. So we have so, token metrics customers just know that we are just as intrigued by our products as you are. Yes, so true. <laughs> so what, what kinds of things have you learned coming into such proximity with guys like Bill, Forrest, Jad, and so on? What's something that you know and are comfortable with today that you maybe didn't know and weren't comfortable with, let's say six months ago? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing is to be patient in the crypto space. Mm. Don't allow your emotions to dictate your actions. Um, panic selling, panic buying, both things that I'm guilty of, never a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I've also learned that when it comes to buying, there's always another opportunity. So that might be buying on the dip. It might be getting into another project during its early stages. But always remember that there will always be another buying opportunity. And then um, in terms of selling, I've learned the hard way that you have to pay yourself. As Bill and Forrest like to say, you have to learn to take profits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I, love I, can, this quote. Just... I love this quote from Forrest about how it, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much you refuse to give back, <laughs> yeah. which kind of resonates with me. Yeah, that's a, a, a really good way to put it. Um, yeah, yeah. So I could just tell this really quick story. Please, please. Um, so I got into shopping IO SPI probably back in January when it was like around ten dollars, right? Uh -huh. And I watched it do a thirty x, and I thought, "Wow, you know, I'm a genius." Yeah. And I thought, "Hey, it's you know going to keep climbing, like it, it's 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 going to go parabolic." And then I watched it crash and burn, and I realized that what happened was that I got so caught up in watching the price skyrocket that I didn't have a plan. I didn't take out my initial investment. And so I um, learned a, a lesson a hard way. And I think everybody learns that lesson at, at some point in their crypto investing career. Yeah, I mean, the, you're, you're completely speaking my language because one of the things that I, I play crypto and fiat markets pretty aggressively in both departments. And I have to remind myself multiple times a day 
that I'm not going to become a billionaire tomorrow. This is, this is something that's going to happen very slow. Well, if it ever happens, it's going to happen very slowly and with the benefit of compounding and the key ingredient for success at compounding is time. So I kind of feel you like I'm, I'm still learning these lessons about patience today because, uh, cause you know, I, I want the payoff immediately. Of course, who doesn't, right. who doesn't right. just human exactly. nature. Um, well, what else can we talk about, Nancy? I, I'd be, would you, maybe it's a, a rude question, but I'd, I'd love to know if, if you're comfortable sharing like maybe a, a, a bad interview story. Maybe you interviewed somebody that for, for a job at Token Metrics that it was like, ooh, this did not go well. Do you have any stories like that? Um, trying to think. And, you know, it's amazing. I've done a lot of interviews in my short time with Token Metrics, and I actually can't think of one. I mean, there have been some interviews where I felt like the person wasn't, um, it was almost like I wasn't it, it, on the call with them. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, you know, and that can be a little bit tough. But no, I don't have any good or funny interview stories that I can I can share. Uh, well, maybe then that's a good thing. <laughs> maybe that's a good thing. Let's let's flip the script then. Maybe you uh, maybe we can close this thing out by you giving some advice to somebody who is you know maybe they've got an interview with Token Metrics tomorrow. What what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's got an interview with you about how to crush it? Okay. Well, th this is actually a really good point. I will, I am amazed at how many people don't do their research before they hop on a call with me uh -huh. to talk about job. They don't know what we do at Token Metrics, which like astounds me. Um, that's that's really amazing. I would say probably like 30% of people that I interview really don't have any idea what we do, but they somehow come across um, our job posting and they're attracted to the particular job, but don't have any idea what we do. And I think that it's extremely important um, to be a part of this team, to be enthusiastic about our mission. You know, Our mission is economic empowerment for all mankind. And when you think about that, that's extremely ambitious. Um, yeah. And someone has to be excited about that mission to really do well at Tokenmetrics, I believe. Yeah, very good. Well, I can't think of a better note to go out on than that. We've been talking to Nancy Chen, Principal Recruiter for Tokenmetrics. This has been another episode of Engine Room. My name's Dylan Love, and we'll see you next week.